Hello everyone, this is Vexy Vampire coming from you live from my new apartment. I have been gone for a while and I've been trying to do videos here and there. And yeah, it's just a long story that I need to tell. More or less, I'll try to skim it because I don't want it to be like half an hour, an hour long. But yeah, there is reasons why I was gone for four to five months, almost practically, basically like fully five months to be a top since the summer. So I will get down to the point. I've missed you guys and I hope to make some big changes for this channel and maybe in the future make another channel, but that will be in another vlog. So okay, what happened to me? Why have I been gone so long? Basically, I have been gone so long because, um, basically a fire happened at my, um, my building where I used to live back in the city I used to live. I used to live in Montreal. I won't say exactly where because usually you shouldn't say those things. Sorry, I have like a, a little bit of cold since now the weather's getting colder. But anyways, back on point. Is that there was a fire. And this is a very sensitive topic to talk about, but I wanted to tell you guys. Uh, there was a fire and it broke out uh, from my apartment where I used to live, my apartment building to people's lives. It was uh, upstairs on the highest floor of the building of the apartment. And I was like near the basement on the first floor practically. And I was living at the time, it was me, my boyfriend, and my roommate at the time. And with my lovely kitty, Tiger. And at the time, the night before that, I was watching American Horror Story. I was re-watching season one, and uh, I was showing it to my boyfriend, and we were watching the last episode. And right in that episode, which was a weird freaking coincidence is that there was a fire that broke out in the old house. The house kind of burned down after all the creepy bad shit that went on in that. And there was a fire. And then we stayed up pretty late until like something in the morning and we went to sleep. And then we woke up around 10-ish to 11-ish. And then I go about going to fix myself up, freshen up in the morning, and my boyfriend goes about, like, also, you know, showering and stuff, and then all of a sudden, I hear a big, uh, I hear people screaming, but in my area where I was living at the time, is that kids would generally, like, scream a lot of times, there was a lot of, like, young families, and it was kind of like a little ghetto backyard behind our kitchen and stuff, so it was, like, in the hood. <laughs> But the, no, it was really totally gangster, but it, it did kind of seem ghetto-ish. Um, so there, I thought it was just generally normal, because often little kids scream, they play, it's normal. Uh, and so, yeah. And then I went about to going to either in the living room or do something in my room, and then I hear a big path on the door of my room. I wasn't really doing anything at the time to go answer it, so uh, I, want, I think one or two times I heard a big path on the door. And generally, yeah. So I went to the door, and I'm like, you said the person says the firefighter, the firefighter, and it's like he's like, get the hell out of here! You have to get out. There's a fire in this building. I'm like, oh shit! And then I go run to my boyfriend, and then I tell him uh, um, that there was a guy. But basically, I screwed that up. But it was basically my boyfriend who went to the door. I just generally went to go tell my boyfriend that, you know, there's someone at the door. And then he told everyone. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then told our roommate. And he was like, you for real? And, yeah, it should happen. And then out of all that panic, I was just, like, in a, like, long shirt and shorts or something like that. Or tights. And, yeah, running outside looking like like I just woke up in the morning, basically. And my boyfriend had to rush put, uh, put a shirt on. He was wearing boxers or something. And a roommate outside. And all in the panic, we forgot my cat. And because I couldn't find my cat. And then they were rushing us. So I panicked. 
And then I was so worried about my cat. And there was like eight fa other family units or people living in this building. So I was so worried about that. And then, um, yeah, so I was like, oh, we were trying really hard to tell, like find out what's going on, what's the cause of the fire, how long has it been, you know, going on, how did it start, and also, like, trying to get one of the firefighters to listen to us, that, hey, well, we have a cat, and, you know, and etc. At one point, we finally got the news out, and for people who've had pets, uh, majority, uh, notified them. Uh, the only sad thing is that through all this situation, I think one person did lose their cat, or, or, or was badly, like, injured because there was fire on it. I think it was the place where the fire occurred. I think, uh, from what I understood, it was either a greenhouse, like, there was supposedly pot, marijuana, whatever, and it caused a lot of shit. And some people say it was poor, uh, poor wiring, like, plug circuits into one of the apartments. So I think it was a mixture of a greenhouse plus, plus wiring stuff. We're not fully too sure to this day. But that's what I read from the article. And so out of all this time, I started getting really, really worried, hugging my boyfriend tight and, like, trying to remain calm but getting really, really teary. Like, I'm slightly getting teary right now. It's, like, really hard to talk about this. And it's still hard because we're dealing with the circumstances and stuff. So, yeah. Um, my, my cat finally comes out, he's like, who's this cat, who's this cat, and I'm like, it's our Simosha, Simosha, uh, viens ici, portez à moi, so I'm like, just saying, bring it to me, bring it to me, it's like, French, English area, so, so I have, I speak French, and, uh, yeah, and then I'm like, oh, tiger, and he was like, really breathing heavily, because of the inhale of smoke. Now my theory is that my cat went to go hide underneath the couch or somewhere and while there was like water and stuff coming down because the fire was up on top but things escalated downwards for water damages because they were fire people wrecked the shit out of windows and everything. So I was like crying and holding on to my cat's so ties and then like God says here you could get a cage and my cat wasn't burned or anything, which is what to be expected, because we weren't up high, but, you know, he inhaled smoke, and it would take time for his lungs to clear up a bit, so I was just, like, trying to give him water, trying to calm him down, because he was really, really stressed, and it was traumatizing for him, so it was really hard on me, so, yeah, I did everything I can, and then, um, at one point, uh, uh, we went to the Red Cross, and it's, uh, they were going through everyone to see who has insurance and stuff, and the guy th thought at first he was almost going to check off that we wouldn't have insurance, but we, he asked us, do you have insurance? And we're like, yes. And he's like, congratulations, because not a lot of people around this area, or people overall, uh, in your block have insurance. And we're like, of course we have insurance, we were taught to always get insurance and stuff. Uh, in case of anything, since I was living in my two and a half with my boyfriend, and our four and a half, and then this apartment where we're in our five and a half with our roommate, always had insurance in case of anything, and yeah, um, so, okay, so then they settled us, uh, to go to a motel, um, and, you know, they cover you for three days to stay somewhere, uh, to eat, and to stay somewhere in hygiene products, and sometimes, I think, could be clothing, if not, if your clothes are not wrecked, you could go back in your apartment block to get some, and stuff. So they did that with me, my boyfriend, and our roommate, and from there on, uh, we were trying to find out, like, some of the people from the Red Cross said if it was retained mostly upstairs, your apartment, you should be able to go back in a few days if, you know, if it was because it was mostly upstairs and stuff, the damages, but 
since when we figured out at one point when they finally let us because we were waiting the bus all that time and stretching and talking and me calling my parents, telling my sibling, um, telling them about the situation and yeah, the basic thing of that is that some said it wouldn't have been severe and yeah, by the time we, we, we ate like some snacks because we, we didn't eat really much that day when we woke up and then uh, we had like 15 minutes to go in our apartment and I will be posting pictures throughout this video so you'll probably see, I'll try and um, I took a, uh, I didn't take pictures right away so I, went, I tried to go get some clothes and I was like pretty shocked at like the damages because what the fudge like all the damages were like the fire was upstairs but since they had to wreck the windows, wreck the ceiling, because they think the fire would have escalated, but it didn't really escalate it from what I heard that far. Mostly got water damaged, as well as other stuff. Water damage, flooding and stuff. So, and the fire, fire people not giving a shit because most of our stuff was laying flat on the wall, like what you see in the back here. And, uh, yeah, but you don't see everything, but pretty much laying flat on the wall. So I do not see a purpose for them to toss shelves that were all laying on the wall to toss them on the other side and everything just falls. They could still accomplish what they were wanting to do, like wreck the ceiling without, like, throwing the bookcases and then stuff falling on the floor. I can understand if stuff was in the way, but generally how the apartment was laid out, nothing would get in, you know, in the way, and like our collection stuff, and sl and well, you know, bedroom slash whatever, um, living room and stuff like that. So on the casual side, I go in there, I am like shocked, freaked out a little bit, and I'm like, oh shit, like our stuff. You know, because we were big time collectors and obviously other things. So I was big time shocked, but I didn't have time to like really take care of everything. So what I tried to do is, through the 15 minutes, I just tried to grab some hygiene stuff that was okay and not really damaged. My boyfriend was shocked and stuff. Um, roommate, not so bad, but still, you know. And yeah, we just grabbed some clothes, I grabbed some hygiene products, and if I saw something like important collector-wise stuff, uh, I tried as much as possible for a few minutes just to shove stuff back, but I really had to focus on like grabbing clothes and stuff, but I couldn't grab too much because it was hard with all the debris and everything and shit, so yeah, it was really horrible, but I, I tried to at least grab a, my 3DS and like some games, 3DS games, and my boyfriend grabbed his laptop, which was still okay. So we can have shit to do at the crappy motel. So like generally by the time we get through all this bullshit, and we have Tiger, and we're going to the motel, my boyfriend took time off from his last few days of work he was supposed to have because, you know, the situation. And then a week later was my birthday. Great way to start a week before my birthday is a fire. So we go to this crappy motel and we found out it's right next to this shitty job. And it's in a pretty dead area. And so we're like, oh god, this is horrible. Like, it was supposed to be a three star motel, but it really wasn't. Their, their healthy breakfast was a stale muffin with over sugary juice and fruit cup which was like the Dool's uh, fruit cup and that's not healthy breakfast. I take one bite of the muffin and I'm like, screw this, I'm going to have breakfast at Cora. And yeah, so we just, like, the time we stayed there we shared a room, so it's a room, standard little room with the beds, two beds and like, you know, space for clothing and stuff and services, not much services. And uh, it looked like it's trapped in a time frame like the 70s or like something else, 60s or 70s, depending how you look upon it. And it was really like, really like mediocre. And we had like a um, discount, uh, $35 to eat at Mike's. After a while, for three days, you'll get fed up of Mike's. But what we did, since we didn't eat a lot, uh, we would just generally like... Uh, 
stack up and, you know, just go once and have, like, a nice big meal. And then also at the same time, we went to Walmart because we couldn't grab much from the apartment. So we had to go to Walmart and get some clothes and stuff, which originally we thought that was going to be covered, but not everything was covered by the apartment insurance. But supposedly Red Cross said something about being covered, but I guess that was BS. And uh, other stuff. So generally we went to go get like things we needed, like stuff we needed and like we had my cat so I was clean, I w gave him a bath, fed him, kept him in the bathroom so in case he doesn't do anything bad at the hotel and a motel and stuff and yeah and just generally through this uh, I was trying to tell my friends, the ones who seem very close to me or keep in rage with me more or less of the time and I was just trying to tell individually everyone in my really important online friends like beer and video games and some other people and yeah through all that um i told them and then they decided to do a charity stream for me now this was super thoughtful because at the time they were going to do a stream an all-nighter sort of 24 hours i think or 12 hours if i recall uh stream to just you know for fun and then they dedicated for me it was called vexy five uh, vampire or Fexy Fire or something, that was the hashtag. And, uh, you know, they did, like, charity, raising money to help me through uh, some of the things as much as possible. And they would do, like, you know, take a skunk shot of beer that was sitting in the sun for, like, certain amount, a day or three days or something. And then uh, karaoke fan fiction and raffle for contests and prizes so you give a certain amount from five to ten to twenty fifty dollars i think was the highest or if you want to give more that's with you up to you but those were the things and they would do that or go in the bear costume bear would go in the bear costume and other stuff and you know skunk shot raffle fan fiction uh contest it was really really sincere and stuff um, they were working on doing that, and in the end, when I got out of the crappy motel and into a uh, apartment hotel, it was re apartment hotel was really nice because it was downtown. But in order to activate your insurance, uh, you have to pass the threshold of like spending something. Like, uh, like staying somewhere and calculating the damages more or less from what I understood. And then you'll be able to really get on work with the insurance. Really, really weird insurance. So we stayed in an apartment hotel. My boyfriend had to put a down payment on his credit card plus our roommate. And it was really fucked up because my boyfriend was working so hard with the littlest crappiest job he had to pay off his credit card and other things so eventually he could go back to university and yeah and in the end he had to use his credit card which I felt really bad but at the time it was necessary and uh, we were yeah so stuff like that and, you know, we, it was a nice place. They had a kitchen and stuff. It was close to everything. It was a relaxed world, but still not fully recovered from the stress of everything. And, you know, I would have enjoyed it more if it was like a vacation, but it, this wasn't too much of a vacation. But I kind of just tried to relax as much as possible because I was intense, and I've been intense for the past few months. Um... So I was relaxing with my cat, trying to watch movies, watch the stream, um, and go out when I can and stuff. And uh, yeah. So then eventually at one point we can only, we were supposed to stay there for a month. Or for, we recovered up to a certain amount. But we didn't want to use all that. And we were trying to cut back because we wanted as much as the money to replace things and stuff like these companies that like uh, there's a company that offered us uh, that offers to help with like packing up your things when you go from a flooding a fire etc they overcharged and then there's the electronic company to analyze our electronics and then there's another company to clean our stuff now the company that cleans our stuff was not so bad 
but for the company like Gus, it's called, uh, they really wrecked our shit really badly, and we asked to not get our stuff cleaned, clothing and dishes and stuff. I did all the cleaning of the dishes. It took me a long, long time, and uh, yeah. Uh, also, I did, uh, we did all the laundry at my boyfriend's mother, so she got compensated, and she really didn't spend as much as what they gave her, but she got something that could help her out, and as well as for the dish and stuff, supposedly we got compensated, but I find it wasn't enough, and it would've cost, they probably would've got paid more than what I would've got, what I got to wash all the dishes and do all the stuff, uh, disinfect and stuff. So, yeah, it was really, really bad. So at one point we said, we couldn't stay there. We're not going to stay in Montreal. Um, my boyfriend was going to get a new job w where we used to live. And uh, as well as uh, down the line, it's, uh, you know, we, we said with all the financial situation that occurred because of this fire, we have to take backward steps so we've been through backward steps off and on in our life, and we got through it, and this time we were, like, finally more or less okay, and then this shit happens, and yeah, it was really, really horrible. It's been, like, really, really hard, and I just don't like that, because, you know, we, we all deserve a really good life. Me and my boyfriend, especially my boyfriend, especially me, uh, he works really hard. So yeah, um, we, we went to his mother's place, and his mom lives like uh, in, near the area where he, he, not too far from where he's going to be working, near the town and stuff, so we stayed there for like a month or so, month or two almost, and we were sleeping on a really small couch, because he takes up the more bigger part, and I'm sleeping on the small part. Eventually, down the line, I was like really, really sore. So I was really, really sore from sleeping that way, and it was uncomfortable, and then, well, it's kind of like in the summer, a lot of family members come together, and, um, and yeah, basically, is some of his family members could be so annoying, like, they'll complain a lot when you have two uncles together and stuff, it's really, yeah, really, really annoying, so it was annoying, and there wasn't much we could do, um, I would try to go out, we look at apartments, uh, not to make a big deal, but there were some good apartments, some bad apartments, they didn't look like what they were supposed to do in the pictures, or they smelled, or they weren't renovated enough, or you had to go with price, and because me, financially, I don't get any stable income, I only get a little bit of money through commissions for photos or artwork. It's uh, it, it's not like enough to make a career out of that. True, I would like to make a, a small career out of that if people were interested. But uh, him working and stuff, being on a source, big source of income. Yeah, we had to go with budget and stuff. So we we eventually found some places, and they were really nice. It's just one landlord was really cranky because of, like, you know, the cat situation and people that never clean, and he really seemed pissed, and he wanted the down deposit of $500 in case anything would go wrong. And, like, even if we had that money, we are like, oh, we have to, like, kind of use this money as much as possible to help us. Um, so, like, even through, I love the apartment and stuff, but the guy was kind of a turn-off because, like, he was, you know, you don't really show your anger to other people. You could tell about it, but discreetly, you know? And then there was another place we almost got, but the guy didn't seem in a rush. He came to meet us, asked us the typical questions, um any question and stuff, and then we call him, and then he said he would call us as soon as possible, and he didn't seem to really mind, he was calling, he was taking time, and he said he was going to call us back right away, and he says, just go look for other apartments, and then there was another apartment, and we almost could have moved in in it, it looked kind of like a mini loft studio, which I love that, I love that, and, um, it, it, it just didn't work out because the guy's oh, you have a cat. No, cat's horrible. But I'm like, what the fuck? People have cats and stuff. And not all cats are bad. It was the indoor cat. And he doesn't do shit anymore. Like, he doesn't poop or anything. Uh, 
uh, and stuff. He go, he does his stuff in the letter. I constantly clean the, we constantly clean the letter, make the apartment smell nice, all that stuff. So yeah, at one point it just took a long time, and then yeah. So in the meantime, we're staying there. We're trying to call insurance. We're trying to fix things. Um, you know, trying to regulate stuff. And at one point, we were just fed up with apartment hunting and stuff. And apparently, there was a family member in the family, someone who sells like houses and apartments. So we went with, we discussed with him, and then we went to go see an apartment. But uh, the apartment and the old couple were gonna leave it soon, and it was really not that bad. And he said he could renovate anything we found that needed to be renovated or, or to, not to our liking. So that was cool. But then another thing happened, and just it uh, they they couldn't move anymore uh, because of the health of one. Uh, uh, I think of the the late the wife of the husband. So they couldn't move anymore. And so, we were starting to get really tired of all these screwed up situations and stuff. And then at one point my boyfriend had a car accident and that's just more shit. So it's like a whole bunch of stuff into one big bomb and explosion of like shit. And he was okay, but like the car for where he was working at was not. So then that's another situation added on to the problems of what stuff. And it robbed us of 400 or uh, 300 400 dollars of apartment and money that could have gone towards furniture. Furniture and other things that got damaged. Personal things that got damaged and stuff. And yeah, so that just adds on to the credit card and stuff. And you know, we're trying to get out of this. We were okay, and now we're like put in deep into a hole. So yeah, and, oh my god, this video is like 26 minutes. So, so yeah, um, basically, uh, through all that is just, um, you know, everything that mounted up. And so finally, we went to go live in the three and a half temporarily. It was really shitty. It smelled bad, and it was a person who didn't take care of the place and had to leave because he wasn't paying the rent or the bills, and he didn't take care of the place. So we went there. I'm like, oh, it's horrible. I sc we scrub, we clean, and yeah, we brought all our stuff to occupy the bedroom that act like a big storage room, and then kept some stuff in the kitchen that I took care of, like I said washing dishes, everything, and our TV and whatever electronics that were still okay and the rest were being analyzed, cleaned, and uh, see what works, see what needs to be replaced, you know, down the line. And yeah, so without going through too much details in that, because this video is already long enough, is that, you know, went that, and then, uh, you know, I was just cleaning, cooking, doing what I can, boyfriend working at his new job, doing the best he can, and trying to, you know, get through shit with the apartment insurance. And finally, uh, around October, end of October, mid, uh, early November, I'll say early November, finally moving to this four and a half, it was renovated. It was painted all white, but before I did like it, that there was color a bit. It was like a dark tonish brown gray, and the guy was just like painted all white, and which sucked. The bathroom did get renovated. It was like tiles, really nice tiles and everything, but I find for little things like they were kind of lazy to fix like the cabinets and uh, the the cabinets and underneath the sink. And stuff that could have been renovated because it's pretty dirty, so I had to like disinfect and wipe and stuff, and it's more or less okay. But like some places are, yeah, it's either you had to put it like a towel or a rag to like you know, or you, you know, do the best you can. But like they could have renovated, you know, it's not that much more to renovate. And for more or less, the floor's okay, but like some places it's a little eh. But what are you gonna do? And yeah, so right now I finally got internet back. It's I think been a week or two weeks ago. So yeah, this is more or less my story, and I'm gonna cut this video soon because it's been 29 minutes, and I just I'm going to vlog more about this. 
in the next video. And yeah, this is just my story. If you guys ever want to help, I don't know, I was thinking of doing a charity stream uh, for this, or you could donate to my pen pal. Now, I'm, I feel awkward to ask that, but if you want, you could help. If not, I will be setting up a page, and I will be uh, maybe posting a ballet maybe sometime soon, and, you know, anything could help, you know, it's just to get back on our feed, like, supposedly, uh, I'm not sure what the apartment is supposed to be, one more check, maybe, that could help big time, and then, in, uh, in other ways, if you want, you could help out, all proceeds go to fixing up this situation, so me and my boyfriend can live comfortably again, and be at ease, and, you know, and then I could do, and other things and keep you up to date on what's going on with that and everything so thank you for watching uh, I'm sorry I haven't been around but I'm coming back and I will do a vlog on that okay so peace and farewell my masters and my maidens and I love you all bye bye